In previous video, we have shown that this integral right here is a standard. It's not standard, but it's a, a normal random variable with a mean zero and variance, which is a square integral of this function uh, from zero to t. And in this video, uh, we're going to see uh, why this is the case. Okay, so we'll learn some property of uh, uh, what is like this about. So, and how do we uh, represent uh, this using traditional? So, uh, its representation uh, using uh, dt. Okay. So. And let's first define something called a quadratic. Sorry, a quadratic uh, variation. So a quadratic variation is some sort of a type of a variation. So um, let me give the simplest definition. Assuming the quadratic variation exists then uh, it can be defined by uh, something like this. So we evenly divide uh, interval from 0 to t and uh, so we divide this interval from uh, 0 to t to uh, this uh, n uh, small intervals and then we let uh, this capital N uh, go to infinity. And this is uh, defined by, we compute the difference of the function value on each interval, okay? So here is the absolute value, and then we take square, and then we sum this up, okay? And now let's uh, uh, see something uh, interesting about the quadratic variation, and think about this, um, we can change this uh, 2, so uh, this 2 can be changed to any other uh, alpha, let's say alpha is uh, positive, okay, change to other alpha, and alpha can be uh, 1, and if it's 1, then it's uh, just normal variation. Okay, now let's see this, square, uh, this uh, uh, quadratic variation. Something interesting will happen if uh, f is differentiable. So what if uh, what if f is continuous and differentiable? Differentiable, which means uh, we can assume the maximum of uh, f prime is uh, bounded. Okay, which means each term right here. Okay, for each term. So each term in the sum, in this sum, can be bounded by, this is simple, uh, this is simply a fundamental theorem of calculus, that is uh, fb subtract fa, okay, is simply something like a, a integral from 0 to a f prime uh, dt, okay? Which means if we take out the maximum of uh, this derivative, then this is less than the maximum of f prime on this interval times the length of this interval, okay? Which means for each term, okay? Um, right here. We can take the derivative, which is uh, the maximum, let me add maximum here, maximum of this uh, f prime times the length of the interval. The length of the interval is uh, um, t divided by m. But keep this in mind, we squared it, okay? And now what happens is, for each term, it's less than that, and t is a fixed number. So then we, if we sum up the sum, first of all, the sum, this is quadratic, so sum is positive. And what happens is, 
the sum is actually less than, and we can take uh, this uh, square out, and this is t square, and we have 1 over n square in each term, but when we sum it up, we have totally n terms, and which gives us, so the maximum is less than a fixed number, this capital M, okay, so it's m square times t square, but divided by this 1 over capital N. These two numbers are fixed. Okay, and 1 over n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. And in general, we will find that for continuous function, okay, this is quadratic variation for continuous function. So here is my remark. Uh, here's my remark is for continuous function, continuous and differentiable, which means the derivative is bounded, uh, f, okay, so alpha variation of f is 0. Uh, for uh, alpha is strictly greater than 1. Or in general, you guys can view this as when we take differential, okay, so dt alpha, uh, is 0 when alpha is greater than 1. Okay. Now, let's try to consider what is uh, the quadratic variation for our Brownian motion. Okay. By definition, it is, uh, we copy down the definition. This is essentially uh, this guy, take square, and keep this in mind. Um, we have something here, okay? This is uh, by uh, independent and uh, stationary increment of Brownian motion. We have this is a normally distributed random variable with mean zero and variance uh, uh, t divided by n. And now we have uh, uh, n these capital and these many uh, terms we're taking some then we take limit so we first we write on the limit as it was and we take the sum and uh, um, we can normalize um, this random variable uh, by so which is the same as square root of t divided by n times a uh, standard normal random variable uh, z, which is n01. Let me let me use n01 here. Which means we have, if we take square, it's t divided by n z0 square, okay, plus uh, t divided by n z1 square, plus t divided by n z m minus 1 square. And wherefore, uh, z0, z1, up to z sub m minus 1, they are iid, standard normal random variable, okay? And now, uh, by central limit, I'm sorry, uh, by, you, you guys can view this as a central limit theorem or strong law of large number, okay? So, okay. so we can think about a strong law of large number. And we can first pull out t, okay? And then uh, what happens is this one converges uh, to e. So we, we take sum, okay? And then we divide by n. It's converging to any, like uh, uh, z0. Uh, square. Actually, I should use. Uh, actually, it's converging to okay. And this one, because the mean uh, it's zero. This one is actually nothing but the variance of uh, z zero, which was one. And this is t. And what happens is we have derived that the quadratic variation. 
of uh, a standard Brownian motion is T. And we can actually add uh, this quadratic variation here. Um, if we take differential, this is actually dt. Okay. If we look back at the definition of quadratic variation, this actually is the analogy of... Um, by the way, this is like delta f. Okay. So this is like delta f square sum and limit, okay, which means this one right here. This one is like uh, something like something like this, okay, and this is uh, t. The quadratic variation, because it's a delta f square, and we can view this as, uh, or say, uh, df square. So we can view this as dw square, which roughly translates to, keep in mind, I'm using a quotation mark because this is not a, like a mathematical strict notation. The mathematical strict notation is this one. But we can see this as dw square is dt, okay? Which means our Brownian motions differential is roughly like a square root of dt. As a result, um, we can now um, define A new stochastic processes x of t as an integral from uh, 0 to t f of s t w s. Okay. Now this uh, x of t is uh, um, well defined. If we want to write it in uh, differential form, uh, it can be written as dx of t and this is uh, f of t times d w of t. And Whenever we see, that, by the way, this is called a stochastic differential equation, or in SDE in short. Whenever we see uh, this dw, we can see it as uh, square root of dt, something like that. Infinitesimally, it, it's, uh, it's okay to uh, view it this way. Um, this is ds, sorry. And now we're ready to learn the most famous formula um, in stochastic calculus. It's called Ito's formula. Okay. And this can be viewed as a fundamental theorem of a stochastic calculus. What happens is uh, uh, we have, um, of course, x of t is a um, some stochastic uh, processes defined uh, through this kind of a Brownian motion thing, which is uh, something like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be necessarily that, but uh, uh, we can define in that way. Uh, so this is some stochastic. Processes. And next is we have to define a y. Okay. Y is a function of x of t. And this f is some deterministic function from uh, r to r. Deterministic function from r to r. Um, our question to ask is how do we take differential of y of t? All right. This is a question we would like to ask eventually. Um, so let's first take a step back. Let's look at calculus. Okay. Um, when we use Taylor expansion um, for 
a function f of x uh, at, let's say, uh, at, sorry, f of y, okay, at uh, x, for uh, y is very close to x, so x, uh, y is extremely small, what we have is, uh, is f of y is approximately equals, we expand uh, on x, so it's f of x plus f prime at x and y subtract x and plus uh, one half f double prime at x um, y subtract x square. Okay, and let's assume f is smooth. So when f is smooth, so every uh, if every one of its derivative is bounded, what happens is this one is bounded. This one is bounded. This one is like epsilon, and this one is epsilon square. Comparing epsilon with epsilon square, this is like high order term. Okay. That's why um, in the world of differential, we normally just see uh, this uh, first order expansion. We normally ignore uh, this term right here because it's higher order term, okay? However, in the world of, uh, um, in the world of uh, um, Brown emotion, we cannot ignore uh, the second order term. And let's see why. And now let's uh, do the same thing uh, for dyt. Okay? By definition, uh, dyt is nothing but uh, uh, y of t plus dt subtract uh, y of t. And if we write it in x form, it's just f of x of t plus dt um, subtract f of xt. Here is where we use um, the uh, um, this uh, Taylor expansion. What happens is we can view uh, we can view this uh, this y here as x of t plus delta t, and x here is like x t. As a result, uh, we simply will have uh, this term right here, which is the difference is nothing but. Uh, Difference is nothing but f prime value at x of t uh, times x t plus dt subtract x of t. Okay, and now uh, the second order term. This is one half f double prime uh, evaluate at x of t, and then subtract x of t uh, plus dt subtract. Uh, x of t square. In the world of deterministic, this one is higher order term versus uh, this one. But in the uh, world of Brownian motion, this is not true anymore. Instead, what happens is uh, um, so uh, by our notation, the first term right here is nothing but uh, dx dx of t. And the second term right here is our quadratic variation. So it's one half f double prime x uh, of t times the x of t square. And this is actually our uh, quadratic variation. So what happens is we have obtained our famous Ito's formula. So, which is um, d of uh, f of x of t, okay, is f prime x of t times the x of t plus one half. Uh, f double prime of x of t times the quadratic variation of the stochastic process is x. And let me 
write down a deterministic differential formula here. Okay, in the world of differential uh, calculus for deterministic function, if it's x, it's if it's simple x, then this is nothing but f prime of x. Suppose f is differentiable times dx. There is no such term. Okay, because uh, uh, this one in the world of a deterministic uh, world, it's uh, zero, comparing to uh, this term. And now let's see some examples. Okay. The simplest example is uh, we consider our Brownian motion square. Um, okay, and let's uh, uh, this be y t, and we want to compute uh, what's d y t. If in the world of a deterministic uh, function, so let's say y of t equals f of t square, then uh, dy t, dy t is nothing but 2 uh, f of t. We take derivative, this is nothing but chain rule of the outer function, then we take differential of the inner function. Okay, so we, we can further write down this as f prime times dt, but uh, let me just keep it here. However, for the uh, Brownian motion, not only we have the first term, which is uh, the first order term, which is f prime uh, times d x of t. So now x of t is uh, Brownian motion. This will have 2 w of t times d w of t. We have to plus the quadratic variation Brownian motion, and this is uh, if we take double derivative of this f. Um, so uh, this is x squared. So we take uh, double derivative, we get uh, two, and uh, with the uh, one half factor right here, so we get one, and this is one times the w of t, and this is a quadratic variation of Brownian motion. So this is. Uh, 2 w of t dw of t plus dt. 